resident, raised in Santa Clara after Maine, Ravi is the author of an upcoming posthuman memoir, Rocket Scientist. He graduated from UC Irvine's campus-wide honors program in mechanical and aerospace engineering. He infuses futurism and social justice in his acting, like in the upcoming independent feature films Devise and Overwhelm the Sky. This former space camp counselor was in 2009 Star Trek. Valetti is a volunteer at hashtag MarginSci, advisor to March for Science San Francisco, and Oakside, the Oakland Coalition for Science. Now, this South Asian for Black Lives brings some model minority mutiny. So please welcome Robbie Valetti. One time at space camp, <laughs> no, I won't tell that one right now. I might save that for my memoir. Um, thank you, Trace and everybody and all my uh, all my compadres here today. One time in a Del Taco parking lot. This one's not a joke. It sounds like it, but bear with me. We're going to get into my feelings. One time in a Del Taco parking lot after a, an unofficial cadet premiere of the 2009 feature film Star Trek. I sat with my younger sister. Uh, we got a late night meal. They have vegan and vegetarian options. They, they actually do. I mean, you know, might not be the place you'd think. And it was one of the first times, if I recall correctly, that I cried in front of my sister so vociferously. Um, part of being brown, part of being margin sigh, is choosing, actually not choosing, is demanding our feelings for ourselves, let alone for others, especially people who may be more privileged, and especially for people who may be more prejudiced. So we're sitting there in that parking lot. We had just seen this movie, this incredible film. Yeah, people can get into the debates over the Kelvin timeline of Star Trek versus the Prime timeline. I grew up with the original series and I love Deep Space Nine, but you know, having been a performer in the reboot of Star Trek in 09, I, I came to love it because it's family. You know, when you, when you get to know people like I have with the March for Science, through all the challenging discussions on protecting science funding and how to talk to climate change deniers and how to do a better job on race and justice and our transgender siblings, to look out for them in and out of STEM. All the LG, LGBTQIA, etc., disabled in STEM, black and STEM, Latinx and STEM, indigenous knowledge is knowledge, indigenous science is science. We don't usually get to feel our own feelings, and I can't help but be doing that right now. I was just in Washington, D.C. with some of our National March for Science leaders, and it's, you know, it's been a journey. This movement has done a lot of good, and it can do even more. I, I feel a turning point happening, and I, I don't know why I'm back in that Del Taco parking lot. As I start this, I actually thank Seeker for asking me a little bit ago about Trek, and then... I'm an improv artist a lot of the time with some of my acting, and, and I, I'm feeling that flow. Because I was crying with my sister as a man. Sometimes we're told not to cry in front of others, period, let alone my younger sister. But here's why. And here's why this connects to what we're talking about today and what we need to be talking more about going forward. It is so hard to get through certain days when somebody is from a background where there's struggle. I may be Indian American. In the Bay Area, a lot of Indian Americans have tended to be doing pretty well economically in engineering. I have engineering degrees, but my family was not well off and we had a lot of struggle. You see Irvine, zot, zot, zot. Thankfully, through the honors program and a Regent scholarship and being an HA, which is like an RA for dorms, I got to, to get through college. 
on the funding side. But I entered a world as a graduate in 2002, part of the first mechanical and aerospace engineering graduating class after 9-11, where the career opportunities presented to me and my classmates started shifting. I was in Star Trek, had my scene cut, but I got to be a part of it. I love it. It inspired why I went into engineering. It also inspired why I went into acting. But it more than anything continues to have me pause and look at how are we applying this science? How are we advancing? After 9-11, decisions started to be made on the applications of technology in certain ways that I was uncomfortable with. Last night, and I know we're not supposed to be technically partisan here, and, but we can be political, we have to be political. B being brown is a political act because we get threats just to exist. I feel comfortable here right now, but I don't fully know I'm safe here right now. Honestly, that's just the reality of it. And folks who have even more challenges than I do as a heterosexual cisgendered Indian American man, black women, transgender black women, native folks, etc. For them, I try to use whatever privileges I have, knowing I'm also marginalized when I'm walking through the airport yesterday. Is that going to be easy for me? It's a juggle. I know, Del Taco parking lot. I'm like obsessed right now. What's going on? Why do I keep going back there? Well, here's why. In that lot, why was I crying? Because I didn't know how to temper my dreams. We're told we're supposed to dream big. Anything's possible. Pick yourself up by the bootstraps. This is America. Anyone can do anything. If they're good enough, they're smart enough, they work hard enough. And it is hard for folks to realize it should be that way, but a lot of that unfortunately is a myth, especially for we black and brown folks. Now, when somebody points out an exception, great, we should celebrate. We should celebrate. But that doesn't mean we say that's the rule for everybody, especially for marginalized backgrounds. We live in a time, we're standing in a city called Oakland, Oak Town. Can I just get a let's go? Oakland. Has the Warriors playoff game started? Go Dubs. Go A's. Go Sharks. I grew up in Maine, so I like hockey too. Go figure. Like a little brown kid. So I'm crying to my sister because I didn't yet know as an artist that I should wait till the final cut of a film or a TV show to know if your big scene is kept in. I've learned that lesson, and especially as I've gotten to do independent film work here in the Bay Area, incorporating social justice, futurism, art, humanity, you name it. But now that I'm standing here as one of, I guess, a leader in the March for Science, but somebody who tries to have it be even better on social justice, through a margin side lens and to honor the black and brown women who have led black and STEM and continue to. Let's keep doing better. I want to dream again, I want to feel whole. I know many of you do too, and those who may be watching online who, for understandable reasons, might not make it here today. Our undocumented friends, for example, and, and uh, disabled friends and other folks. Things are on the up and up. The midterms are important, but this is a marathon. We can breathe. So breathe, we take our time. Oconda forever. <laughs> Another big hand for Robbie.